Hello beautiful people, long time now see. I am so happy to be back again and in this video I want to share with you some of my knitting whips and what I've been listening to and watching. And I thought we'd just have a catch up. My first whip which I'm really excited to share with you is this gorgeous piece right here. And if you are new to knitting and new to knitting terms, uh, WIP is a W-I-P and that stands for work in progress. And this is my currently most knitted on work in progress. I may have a couple of euros which would be unfinished objects lingering around my home. But this one I'm actually working on at the moment. And I'm sorry about the horrible lighting. I've put the children to bed. I'm home alone and I just had a couple of minutes to talk to you guys. So I'm here and I'm happy to be here. But this beautiful thing right here is a cardigan. And as you can see, it's knitted from the top down. Here you have beautiful Racklin shoulder and another beautiful rattling shoulder. I just love the way this shows up and focus. Yes, it ah the color is slightly off. This is not entirely grey. This is sort of a mm, slightly pinkish grey, if that makes sense. It's a mystery yarn that I got from my mum. It's very soft. It's wool, but there's a it's a wool blend. It's not 100% wool. Uh, but right now I don't know what it is because there were no bands or anything. And the project I am knitting is... I don't know what this pattern is called in English, but I know it's in avail available in, in English. I am not sure if this um, knitwear designer translates her pattern names or not. In Danish it's called Ingen Digda by Petit Knit and it's a beautiful, beautiful oversized cardigan. She has done here in a mustard and again as a set. I did it in a mystery yarn because it was available for free and right now I am trying to not spend as much money on knitting because I need a new wardrobe and sadly I can't knit all of it so I have to spend some money on clothes instead of yarn. This is a really simple pattern so far and it's a lot of fun to knit. You have to make the um, increases and you have to keep track of the increases at the side which is a bit of a counting game sometimes but otherwise it's pretty straightforward but it takes me a long time to get anywhere on it it feels like. A week ago I placed this so I've knitted uh, around a centimeter in a week. That's not a lot for me. And this is a combination of me not prioritizing my knitting and of the rows just getting longer and longer. Every other row I add two, four, six, eight stitches. So every other row I add eight stitches and I am feeling it now. I'm feeling the rows getting longer but the yarn is really enjoyable to work with and the pattern is very well written so far. So that's my first project and that's the one I'm currently keeping in my nice little project basket right here. This is a basket I got from my mum and is one of those African handmade baskets is really sturdy and very good for a knitting project. Now I have another project I want to share with you but first I want to talk about what I've been doing while I've been knitting because I am not great at just sitting down and knitting and doing nothing else. 
I tend to knit while doing something else. And I'd love to hear what you do while knitting, if you just sit and meditate or pray or whatever, or if you do something more along the lines of what I usually do. I just finished reading or listening to uh, the audio version of Deep Work by Carl Newport. And I was debating if it was kind of ironic that I was knitting while listening to a book on being focused. But then again, I focus really well with something in my hands. And some of my best learning, I think, have been done with knitting in my hands. So what do you think? Is it ironic to listen to a book about being focused and concentrating for longer stretches? Uh, all the while doing something else at the same time? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinion on it. <laughs> I've also been watching a new show and this show is just like... It's not as great as the ones I really love, but it's a decent show. I am a huge fan of the BBC Farm series and if you are not familiar with those, I beg you, as soon as you finish the, watching this video, take your merry little hands and uh, go do the uh, BBC Farm videos on YouTube search and be amazed. There are several series and I just, I love them. It's this team of people. In the BBC Farm series, you have the historian Ruth Goodman and you have two archaeologists, uh, Alex Langlands and Peter something. And they sort of go back in time, wear period clothing and do something on the farm throughout the year as they, it would have been in that period, as close as they can. Now, these three characters uh, have done another show called Full Steam Ahead, which is all about the steam engine and how the railway revolutionised life in Britain. And it's very interesting. We have learned so much and I have been knitting and enjoying seeing this show. We haven't quite finished, I think there's six episodes and we have watched four so far. So I'm excited to have a couple left. It's not quite the quality of the others. They aren't doing things sort of fully period, uh, which I adore, but it's very informative. And these three people, if you're anything like me, you'll come to love them and their character and the way they interact with, with each other they're just brilliant brilliant team keep your hands busy and your heart quiet bye for now oh it itches it itches oh okay it still itches <laughs>